Well, first of all, I also called all the inflation that we're experiencing, and it actually has its origins to the 2008 financial crisis, because what the government did in response to that crisis, QE1, QE2, QE3, all of that, plus you know what we did during COVID, that is the source of all this inflation. And it's gonna to continue to get worse as long as we continue to run these massive deficits. Uh, we're running a $2 trillion a year and rising debt. And, and this is going to lead to much higher inflation in the future than what we've experienced in the past. And I think that the decline in the CPI is over. We bottomed out two months ago at 3% year over year. Now we're at 3.7% and rising. And I think inflation is gonna be a much bigger problem in 2024 than it was in 2023. The global economy is walking unsteadily on the cliff of uncertainty, gripped by a growing sense of worry and tension as inflationary pressures threaten to unravel the delicate fabric of financial stability. In recent months, the relentless surge in prices has cast a shadow over the aspirations of individuals and the ambitions of nations alike. Spiraling costs of essential goods and services, coupled with supply chain disruptions, have destroyed purchasing power and left households struggling to make ends meet. Now the most difficult question is, is this situation becoming more vulnerable? What are the opinions of the experts on this situation? Are there any safety measures we may take to remedy this situation? We're here to answer all of your questions, and we have a special expert's advice too, so make sure to stick to the end and be aware of the impending disaster. The state of the global economy, already grappling with the devastating impact of the pandemic and Russia's invasion of Ukraine, is now confronted with an alarmingly bleak and precarious future. The emergence of unforeseen risks has left us deeply concerned. What's particularly distressing is the surge in inflation, notably in the U.S. and major European economies, which is prompting a worrisome tightening of worldwide financial circumstances. While it's true that American perceptions of the economy have been on the uptick, there's a lingering concern about a significant gap between how the public views the economy and its actual performance. A recent poll has revealed that a worrisome 71% of Americans currently characterize the economy as poor or not so good. At the same time, there's a rather unsettling prediction, suggesting there's only a meager 15% chance of avoiding a recession in the next 12 months. The vibe session, a phrase coined to describe the unpleasant atmosphere caused by the rapid increase in prices after a period of relative stability, has been applied to this peculiar phenomenon. It seems as though this shock has caused many people to ignore a wealth of positive economic indications. During the initial year or two of the pandemic, a wave of concern washed over economists from various political backgrounds as they critiqued President Joe Biden's economic strategies. A notable observation was the Federal Reserve's decision to abstain from raising interest rates when inflation initially surfaced, and this move surely raised eyebrows. A sense of foreboding prevailed, with many foreseeing an ominous path of inflation spiraling out of control, leading to a future of prolonged unemployment if corrective actions weren't swiftly implemented. The latest figures from the personal consumption expenditure deflator are also causing some concern. Inflation has dipped below 3% for the past three months, a significant drop from the previous year, although it is accurate that the rate is progressively moving towards the Fed's 2% objective. Still, there's a persistent concern about whether the Fed's delay in adjusting interest rates could have averted the current economic woes. This has left many with crinkle brows, questioning the wisdom of the Biden administration's economic strategies. Accusatory fingers are being pointed at President Biden for his fiscal stimulus spending decisions, adding to the sense of unease. However, according to many analysts, if the Fed had acted with greater haste, it might not have rescued the American economy, nor would it have alleviated the prevailing sense of political discontent. Many people in the USA are keeping debts on their credit cards for a long time. Many Americans worry about how they can pay their rent and buy groceries. Although the problems caused by these financial difficulties might seem the same, they actually come from different reasons. On the other hand, economic experts are showing a lot more concern than we are. Economist and gold enthusiast Peter Schiff has raised a troubling alarm about an imminent crisis looming over the U.S. dollar. Schiff, renowned for his pessimistic view of the U.S. economy and his unwavering faith in gold as a sanctuary asset, earnestly points to the compelling factors propelling the U.S 
perilously closer to a severe currency catastrophe. Peter Schiff has offered a prudent advisory regarding a potential forthcoming full-blown financial crisis that he anticipates could impact the U.S. economy prior to the Federal Reserve achieving its inflation objective. In his analysis, Schiff also posited that this impending financial turmoil may necessitate the Federal Reserve to consider revising its inflation target. It is advisable to stay informed about these developments and their potential implications for the economic landscape. Schiff is worried about what the Federal Reserve is doing. He says they keep giving lots of money to banks, and they're also keeping interest rates very low. This, he thinks, is making the U.S. dollar worth less over time, and he believes that's bad because it makes people and other countries lose trust in the U.S. dollar, which can harm the economy. Schiff's persistent warnings about an impending financial crisis have left many with a deep concern. Recently, he delivered a stern caution, stressing that investors seem oblivious to the fact that the Fed cannot tame the inflation monster without risking a cataclysmic financial meltdown even worse than the one in 2008. Previously, The Economist painted a troubling picture, placing the blame not on the current interest rate hikes but on the ill-advised rate cuts that preceded them. It's as if he's been shouting from the rooftops all along, warning that when the Fed slashed rates to zero, it struck a perilous bargain. Well, now the reckoning has arrived and it's truly alarming. Furthermore, he is deeply concerned about the government's current situation. Unfortunately, it's not in a favorable state. The budget deficits have surged even beyond what they were when interest rates were at rock bottom. This means that the government is now spending significantly more money, which is worrisome. To address the pressing issue of inflation, it's crucial for the government to take immediate action and cut down on its spending. This is a smart move that can help stabilize the economy. According to the experts, the money you get from your job will be worth less because the government is helping the banks. This is not good for your savings, even if your bank is safe. The problem now is rising prices, which can hurt everyone. Even if your bank goes out of business, you'll lose your money. But because the government is protecting the banks, everyone with a bank account will find it harder to buy things with their money. So far, nothing has fixed the problem, and financial experts are mistaken about thinking inflation will stay low in the future. Schiff said that even though the government increased interest rates a lot in the last year and a half, it hasn't been enough to lower inflation. Also, he posted some tweets where he's not happy about the money situation in the U.S. right now. He thinks that because they made a deal about the debt limit that he doesn't like, the government will keep spending too much money and getting into debt. He believes this will cause big problems for the country's money and the value of the dollar, and he thinks the price of gold will go up. And, to preempt a looming crisis, Schiff puts forth a range of prudent solutions. He strongly recommends trimming government expenditures, especially in domains like entitlement programs and extravagant military outlays. Additionally, Schiff underscores the vital significance of embracing prudent fiscal strategies and curtailing the national debt to instill renewed trust in the U.S. dollar. Now one may ask what type of precautions could be taken to prevent it. Well, nobody wants the economy to struggle or lose their money. When the economy is uncertain, it's a good idea to spread your investments around and consider putting some of your assets in other countries as a backup plan. When the economy is not doing well, smart investors usually try to keep their money safe from rising prices. They might try to do this by putting their money in an account in another country or by investing in strong global currencies. Peter Schiff said that when prices are rising fast, it's a good idea to invest in things that are real, like stuff we can touch and use. Things like gold, which is valuable, and stocks from strong companies that pay you a part of their profits still do well in times like this. So, what do you think? Will the Fed, along with the government, be able to resolve the issue? Is it possible to drive away the inflation wave? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on thought-provoking discussions like this. Thanks for watching.